By the end of May 1987, child protection in Cleveland was at a standstill. Prompted by their senior police surgeon, Cleveland Constabulary had virtually withdrawn from any investigation diagnosed by paediatricians Marietta Higgs and Jeffrey Wyatt. It produced complete stalemate, really. It meant that no matter how hard we tried in the social services department to gather evidence, to interview children, and no matter how hard police officers on the ground worked to the same end, and some of them still did, that at the end of the day, we would still be left in the middle of a row between doctors. In June, the case of a five-year-old girl typified the standoff. The girl's father had served prison sentences for sexually abusing three other young girls. Dr. Higgs found unequivocal medical evidence of recent abuse. Almost immediately, the little girl, given the code letter I.I., described how her father repeatedly molested her. The child was living in the same household as a convicted offender. Um, she had given a very clear disclosure. There were other worrying symptoms that she'd had. The mother believed her and could provide some supportive evidence. Um, and there were medical findings. So in many ways, what more could any police officer or any other professional for that matter ever want? But because their police surgeon had warned them not to trust Dr. Higgs' diagnoses, Cleveland police refused to prosecute the girl's father, despite her clear disclosure to a police officer. She told me she had a poorly tuppence, which was caused by her father moving his fingers up and down inside. She stated that this had been going on for some time. In my opinion, there is no doubt he is responsible for this assault, but with the present policy, I was unable to charge him. If you don't have the police element in a multidisciplinary investigation, you can't do anything about the perpetrator. We had children here where we had no named abuser. We didn't know what we were protecting them from. It meant, sometimes it meant taking them away from home simply because we had no idea who the perpetrator was. The result was an extraordinary increase in the numbers of children admitted to Middlesbrough General Hospital. My reaction to the numbers, uh, the size of the problem that was being uncovered, was a, it, it surprised me really in that I, I thought this can't be true. But I was aware with a lot of the children that there had been ongoing concern for a long time about other problems. And I had to remind myself of that. The case of three children, two girls and a boy, later given the code letter X, was all too typical. Social services had been worried about them for more than a year when the eldest girl had what appeared to be an accident. It started by, we were lighting the fire in the backyard and my daughter was sat on uh, a bench set that we had. And as the flames hit quite high, high level, she fell, she jumped and fell and hurt herself between the legs. The girl, who was then five, was taken to Middlesbrough General Hospital. Casualty staff referred her to the paediatricians for a full examination. We were seen by Dr Wyatt and he told us that she'd been sexually abused. And he demanded that we go home and get the other two children and bring them. Dr Wyatt's examination revealed evidence consistent with non-accidental injuries, as well as signs of anal and vaginal abuse. He told us he was going to get a second opinion, and he produced Dr Higgs, who came up and examined the children and said exactly the same thing. He said the children were dirty, Filthy, underweight. underweight, disgusting children. I was, I was that angry. I pinned him up against the wall. It was really, I just couldn't believe it. Well, when parents react like that, it's it's very difficult for children to tell anybody what is actually happening to them. It places the children in a situation of impossible conflict because almost whatever they do or say um, won't be accepted or believed by someone, which is why we tried to remove the, the children to a more neutral environment by admitting them onto a hospital ward where they would be able to um, talk over with someone neutral what had actually happened to them. 
But as the children bedded down on the hospital ward, their parents banded together to deny even the possibility of abuse. And in their local MP, they soon found a powerful champion. We're supported by um, Stuart Bell, MP for Middlesbrough, and it was brilliant. He was uh, one hell of a man. Stuart Bell was extremely in influential at that time because he had such a high profile in the media. He was everywhere. Whenever we wrote to him, he'd write straight back to us. He actually came and seen us. It was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. He was at Middlesbrough General. He was, he was everywhere. Where the parents were, he was there. Then, on June the 26th, the previously local dispute between the police surgeon and the paediatricians became a national controversy. Dr Alistair Irvin is the senior police surgeon for Cleveland, and today he spoke out against the actions of the paediatrician at the centre of the child abuse row, Dr Marietta Higgs. The row centred on reflex anal dilatation. Dr Irvin claimed the technique was new, unreliable and controversial. My views have the support of the majority of my colleagues working in the in the field of abuse the, the, by experienced police surgeons and others the, the views of dr higgs are to say the least very controversial views which are not widely had, held at all but dr irvin was wrong his own professional body the police surgeons association advised its members that rad should arouse strong suspicion that abuse has occurred other major medical bodies also endorsed it RAD is an established physical sign in buggery. It's been in the forensic textbooks for tens of years, uh, and it has gradually been refined to understand why it occurs. What is important, of course, is you cannot rely on that physical sign alone. But it is my understanding that that did not happen, and that other factors were appearing in these cases rather than just the physical sign. The increasing vehemence with which Dr. Irvin opposed almost any diagnosis made by Dr. Higgs led social workers to doubt the reliability of his judgments. Sometimes a police surgeon would see precisely the same um, child or the same slides or the same reports and not see, in inverted commas, the same thing, would see something that, um, in, particularly in Dr. Irving's case, that he thought was normal. So, uh, a, a torn anus or anal fissures uh, and things like that which, in a very young child, for example, for which there isn't a very easy or obvious explanation, Dr. Irving would not um, feel at the same level of concern about that. But the social worker's decision to bypass the police surgeons drew immediate criticism. Mr. Stuart Bell, is the Minister of State aware that it was Dr. Marietta Higgs, a consultant paediatrician in healthcare on Teesside, and Mrs. Sue Richardson of Cleveland Social Services, who colluded and conspired to keep the police out of allegations of sexual abuse? Whereby Throughout Dr. that summer, MPs fanned the flames of an increasingly bitter row. Richard Holt, would not my honourable friend feel? Mr. Tim Devlin, the innocent, my right, parents, my right. the innocent children, and those parents who are afraid to take their children to I'm hospitals sure now in South Bell. in case I that they may right. find themselves in a similar situation, if the two doctors involved were to be suspended, Consultant paediatrician Dr. Marietta Higgs, since May the 1st, 197 cases have been Today diagnosed. declined once again to be in the parents of many of these children are now speaking out. On the dramatic Some rise in the number of abuse cases she's diagnosed. She was extremely upset after our... If my daughter, three-year-old, has been abused... What's your reaction to the fact that they could take your son for two months? Marriages, people have allowed to been in hospital now nine days. My wife slept... Reporters appeared to make no effort to verify the parents' stories, and mothers who accepted the doctor's diagnoses were never interviewed. A lot of people were shouting about how Dr Higgs had diagnosed the children and was splitting the families up. To me, it was more a vendetta against Dr Higgs than the fact that the child abuse had been discovered. Behind the doors of his home, Jean's husband abused their three daughters, all under eight years old, and pressured them never to talk about the abuse. 
The eldest one closed up, wouldn't talk to anybody, wouldn't say anything. Um, the middle one, oh, we we tried to find out of her if anybody had been doing anything that shouldn't, and all she kept saying was that the eldest one, her, had a secret, and the eldest one would hit her if she told us a secret. Only Dr Higgs' medical intervention and Jean's acceptance of it stopped the abuse and allowed the children to be protected. I praised Dr Higgs all the way through. Uh, I was grateful to her for diagnosing my children so early on. And I just think she saved quite a few children uh, from being abused. Soon, hostile reporting came to dictate the course of the Cleveland crisis and to drive the courts before it. The protection of children depends on the climate of public opinion. Um, the law is, the courts are not immune from it. It's, it's the crucial deciding factor, really, as to whether child sexual abuse will be dealt with or not. And the way in which the public hysteria was whipped up by the media meant that the, the cases didn't have a chance, really. One judge, for example, said that he um, intended to hear the case by the standards of criminal evidence, the standard of criminal evidence being beyond reasonable doubt, and the, the standard that should prevail in children's cases, the balance of probabilities. The, the judge felt that because of the controversial nature of the, the cases at the time, he had to go for a criminal standard of evidence. Another judge said that she lived in the area, uh, read the newspapers, and was bound to be influenced by what she read and heard. By mid-June, courts were faced with a conflict in medical evidence. Police surgeons retained by the families attacked the paediatrician's diagnoses, especially RAD. Soon, the judges turned a deaf ear to doctors Higgs and Wyatt. The family given the code letter X were amongst the first to be reunited in a blaze of publicity. We had people from TVM, um, BBC One, Tantis, all covering the story. Because I think we were one of the, the first families to actually get the children back. How do you feel about the verdict? Fantastic. It's what we've been waiting for. We've actually achieved it now. We're getting them over, that's it. We were in cough two weeks. The judge came back and he just told me, she said, this family was a very happy family until all of you interfered with their lives. He said, I have no alternative but to send these children back to the parents. But that decision flew in the face of allegations held in the family's social services file, evidence which has never been properly tested. Ten years on, the parents deny it. They said that your kids had dug up the floorboards of their house and set fire to it. No, that's wrong. They said that you, the, the children had an uncle who had abused other children when he was 12. No. No. <laughs> totally. Unbelievable. They said that the kids were underweight. Yeah, that's what Dr. White had said. Um, and they said that your son had bruises all over him. No. Load, load of rubbish. And they said that he'd drawn a picture for an NSPCC officer of a man, apparently, in their words, buggering a boy. No. We, we loved the children, and there's no way we would do anything to the children whatsoever. Me, my family, anybody. Once the courts rejected the paediatrician's evidence, the county council abandoned many of its cases, laying itself open to compensation claims even where the children had disclosed abuse. A situation developed where the ca cases either um, were proven or fell on the basis of medical evidence alone. Other supportive evidence, mainly which we held in the social services department, started to be screened out. We would have had statements from the child, the social workers and a child psychologists' evidence from interviewing, which were completely aside from the medical findings. Are you saying that evidence about children's safety was not presented to courts 
which subsequently returned those children. Yes, I am saying that very clearly. Um, in some cases, evidence was not put in the court. In other cases, um, agreements were made between lawyers uh, not to put the case to the court at all, particularly as the crisis developed latterly, that children were sent home um, subject to informal agreements um, or agreements between lawyers. The cases never even got as far as the court. The two little girls from the M family, the very first children in the crisis, were amongst the casualties. Despite the bruises on their bodies and despite a clear disclosure of abuse, they were handed back to their parents unprotected. There was a, a, one young child in that household who did make what I thought was a, a very clear statement being, being four. Um, she said that um, Daddy had put a toy in her bottom and when she was asked what the toy was she said it's an extra leg on Daddy and I thought that was pretty graphic and believable and as I understand it that evidence was never presented to the court because the medical evidence was disputed and the trial or the, the case was finished without the disclosure evidence being heard. It, it was just the worst, I think the worst thing that ever happened to me was, was with all the concerns I had had, the sexual abuse in a way was unimportant. That seems a terrible thing to say, but that was just another worry. I had had such concerns about the family and they were returned and I don't know what's happened to them now. The adult system let the children down in Cleveland and didn't protect them against what I believed was a real risk of abuse. And that was all a collective adult responsibility. It wasn't the children's fault, but the children were the ones that were punished. 